What's up everyone? Welcome back to Real Simple Mushrooms where we simplify home mushroom cultivation. Uh, today's video is going to be all about agar work. Uh, it's going to be a little bit longer than usual because we're going to cover a lot of topics uh, underneath the umbrella of agar work. Um, some of the things that we're going to cover today are going to be supplies, why it's so important to learn agar, your agar workflow. When you're doing a bunch of different things like we are today, there is a workflow you have to think about and plan strategically. Uh, we're going to talk about culture transfers from a nice clean plate to expand it to multiple plates. Um, we're also going to show you how to take this agar plate and inoculate grains with it. <clears throat> we're going to talk about how you select a fruit, a mushroom, to clone and take a tissue sample from. And we're also going to show you how to take that tissue sample and expand it to agar so that you can start to isolate specific traits you, you find in your tub. If you, if you find some interesting stuff, big clusters, big fruits, um, and we'll talk about all of that too. Um, we're also going to talk about transferring clean mycelium growth from a contaminated plate to a clean plate um, so that you can clean up cultures, save cultures, things like that. And then finally, we're going to discuss just some tips and tricks and techniques to help you be more successful when you're doing agar work and kind of thwart the big ugly sea, the contamination. Um, so if you like our content, please like and subscribe. It does help our channel. We are new here and it helps me know that I should keep doing this and, and taking the time to do this for you guys. Uh, I love to teach people about this. It's a, it's a fun hobby. I've been doing it on and off for 25 years. So uh, strap in and, and let's get started. All right, guys, so let's talk about workspace preparation for a moment, because a clean workspace is the foundation of any successful mycology work. We're going to have open agar plates, petri dishes exposed to air, so we want to minimize the chances of contamination. How do we do that? Number one, we want to make sure you close all your windows and turn off any fans that are circulating air anywhere near your workspace and in your house. There's a lot of airborne contaminants floating around and we want to give those a chance to settle down on the surfaces so we can wipe them up later. Um, while you're waiting for the air to settle, go take a shower, do your hygiene routine, brush your teeth, all that good stuff. Put on clean clothes. Um, throughout our day as we're going around and going outside and walking around, mold spores, bacteria, everything's sticking to us. Um, so it's always a good idea to have fresh clean clothes on, especially when you're doing agar work and you have open plates. Okay, again, minimizing the chances of contamination is, is what we're after here. You know, I've been growing mushrooms on and off for 25 years as a hobby. I've only recently acquired a, a flow hood. Um, at the bare minimum to do agar work, you're going to need a still air box. I don't really plan on doing a video on one. Uh, if you guys want me to, let me know in the comments. I will. Um, but there's a lot of great ones out there on YouTube if you just search it. <clears throat> Again, you can be very successful working in a still air box. I was for years and years and years. I finally made the jump, purchased a little bit more professional equipment. Um, this is a game changer. Absolutely love it. Uh, I'll do a video one day on my bonsai flow hood and some of the modifications I've made to it to, to make it uh, workable for me. All right, so we're going to get into some of the other tools we need, and then we're going to get into some of this work. So let's go. All right, guys, so let's go over a couple of the other things that you're going to need before we get started. You're going to need a spray bottle with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Again, we use 70% because it doesn't evaporate as fast as 99. Um, it gives the alcohol time to break down the cellular walls of any bacteria, mold spores, things like that. Uh, you're going to need gloves and a mask, paper towels. Um, you're going to need a scalpel. Uh, I like the number 11 size blade, per personally. Uh, you can also use like an exacto knife. You're going to need a heat source uh, to flame sterilize your blade. Uh, you can use a lighter, but I find the torches make a little bit quicker work of it. Um, parafilm or grafting tape to actually seal your plates afterwards. Um, I used parafilm for a really long time, but this stuff is expensive. And I don't like it because it tends to stick together. Like if I have a stack of plates and they all have parafilm on them, the parafilm will actually stick together. And as it sits and ages, the parafilm will actually dry out and crack. So I've completely switched to grafting tape, which is basically, it's kind of like saran wrap, but it comes in a small roll. It's really easy to wrap the tapes. It's breathable, the plates, I'm sorry, it's breathable. Um, and it's significantly cheaper than parafilm. This, I, I, I don't even use parafilm anymore at all. I only use grafting tape. Uh, it's been a game changer for me. 
Uh, I'll throw some links in the comments down there so you guys can grab some. <clears throat> and then uh, other than that, I think just a Sharpie to label your plates afterwards because labeling is key. You know, it's very easy to mix up genetics and stuff. So you always want to make sure you label everything properly and, and accurately. Uh, and that'll make a big difference in your workflow. So let's talk a little bit about why agar is so important. Um, the hardest thing to do in mushroom cultivation is get a clean grain spawn. If you can get to the point of having clean grain spawn, that's 90% of the work of successful mushroom cultivation. Agar allows us to see, physically see with our eyes or with a microscope, whether or not our culture is clean. We can use agar to germinate spores. We can use agar to test liquid cultures. We can use agar to expand cultures that we have uh, selected and grown. And, and all of this works with every kind of mushroom you can ever think about growing. So that's why a good foundation of agar knowledge is so important in mycology. And if you really want to take this stuff seriously, this is something you're going to have to learn at some point. Um, you're able to pick faster growing cultures. You're able to clone. You're able to clean. Uh, there's just so much you can do with agar. It's so very, very important to learn. All right, so let's get into agar workflow. And you have to think about this if you're doing multiple things like we are here today. So today, what we're going to do, right? We are going to first transfer from a clean culture and expand it to clean plates. Then after that, we're going to take the rest of this clean culture and we're going to inoculate this bag of grains. Then we are going to clone this fruit to these three plates. And finally, we're going to work with this contaminated plate, transfer a clean section to a clean plate. And we're going to do it in that order. Why? Because you always, number one, any kind of contamination you want to work with last in your workspace, right? You want to keep your workspace as clean as possible. If you were to open up a contaminated plate first and then do the rest of your work, there's a chance you could contaminate your other stuff. So always do your contamination work dead last at your workflow. We treat mushrooms as if they're contaminated because fruiting is not a sterile process once these guys are fruiting in the bin or in your bags they're exposed to air so we do not consider these sterile anymore so this also we consider contaminated probably not but we treat it the same um the first thing we want to do is work with all our clean cultures right we know i know this is clean there's nothing visibly dirty in there that's a beautiful culture like we're going to expand that and then we're going to inoculate this bag of grains with it so we'll do all the clean work first the medium stuff second and then the absolute contaminated stuff third so you have to think about that workflow strategically just to again increase your chances of could success and decrease your chances of contamination and that's what this game is all about all right, well, enough talking. We're actually gonna get into doing some of this work now, all right? All right, guys, so here we go. We are going to do our first culture transfer. And what I'm gonna do here is I've got a, I've got a culture I'm gonna expand here to a couple plates. First thing we're gonna do is wipe down our scalpel really well. Wipe down the package for the blade. Um, I like to keep an alcohol soaked rag on my workspace. Um, and this rack right here is to lift everything up in this sterile airflow. Uh, you don't really want to work way down here. You want to work in the middle of the sterile airflow. Just again, increase your chances of success. I've already cleaned all of this stuff off. So we're going to take this culture here, right? We're going to make three plates with it to expand it, and then we're also going to take the rest of it and we're going to inoculate this grain bag with it. So first things first, let's talk about transfers, right? Let's get our scalpel ready. Again, always clean. Never be too clean. Always, always clean. Okay, so... We're going to get our scalpel ready here. I try to avoid touching the blade at all. But be careful. I've definitely cut my fingers a couple times doing this shit. This thing slips on you. It will slice you.
Now we're going to take our torch and we're going to flame sterilize this because I did touch it. Okay, so we got a clean blade, we got a clean plate, or clean culture, I should say. And we've got some clean plates. Now, the trick to this is don't hover over your plates, right? And you'll notice my hands will always be under the plate, and my knife's going to be off to the side. Your clean plates, as quick as possible, make the transfer. The less exposure to air, the better. Um, and if you can follow that, it'll work pretty good. So let's get started. And again, I've got a rag right here soaked with alcohol. And what I like to do is put this lid on here so I know that it's clean, right? Again, don't hover over your plate. Always carry it like this, okay? So we're going to select, there's a bunch of ropey sections here. This section here goes to a bunch of pins. So I'm going to take this section, right? And we're just going to do a triangle. Pick it up with the scalpel. I'm going to set that here. I'm just going to sit that right down on the middle and close it. See how quick that was? The faster you can be with this stuff, the better. Again, don't hover over the plate. I'm just going to take this section right here. I'm going to do a little square, make it a little bigger this time. And again, as quick as you can, lay it right down there and go. You're done, all right? And we're going to take one more transfer from this guy, and we're going to take it right here on this nice ropey section. We'll do another square, why not? Square, circle, triangle, doesn't really matter. Why don't you get it on there? And then I'll put this back on for now. All right, and that's that. All right, so next up, we're going to take the rest of this plate, and we're going to inoculate this grain bag. But first, what we need to do is we need to clean this really, really, really good. I've already done it once, but I'm going to do it one more. Make sure you're getting the gussets here because we're going to be opening this up. Spray it down. Overuse. Like, don't be afraid of the alcohol. Use as much as you feel is necessary. You can't really overkill it. The more is better. Now one thing we're going to do before we put the agar in here is I'm going to open up this bag in the airflow and we're going to get a little bit of air in here. A little bit of good clean sterile air, okay? And that's going to help the popcorn break up a little bit. Okay. Got some air in there. Now we're going to take our plate. Before we do that, Again, always flame sterilize. So I'm going back in again, so I'm going to flame sterilize this again just in case. It's probably good because we were working in the same plate, but let's just make double sure we're good. Clean her up a little bit. So I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to turn this up right here in front of my flow hood and notice I'm being careful not to hover my hands over the opening of this thing because I don't want anything falling in there so all we're gonna do is slice this up like a pie and now we're gonna drop some chunks in here This is a very soft agar recipe. I won't be using this anymore. So that's all I'm going to do because this agar is so damn soft. Now, I'm going to shake that so the agar gets into the grains, right? I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Always make sure you get a nice good seal. There's no gaps in there. It's very important. Okay, and then we're gonna label this guy. And that's that. All right, guys, so let's talk cloning for a minute here. Now, cloning is a way to select ideal characteristics 
in mushroom fruit. So what you want to look for, number one, you want to look for clusters. We want them to grow in clusters. That gives us better canopies. Uh, number two, we want to look for fast growing cultures. So you want to pick your fastest ones, the ones that come up first in clusters. And number three, size. Um, you want to pick bigger fruits, right? Because you want to encourage that trait in your, in your future grows. Um, and also, uh, characteristics like if you find any weirdos or any albinos and things like that you know you're definitely going to want to clone those or, or things that that have different strange characteristics like i've definitely grown some real weirdos and i like to clone all the weird stuff just to see if i can repeat it again so we're going to go over how you take a tissue sample uh, mushroom fruits we don't consider these sterile because they've been in the bins and they've been out in the environments and air has gotten to them so we don't consider them sterile we want to open this up and we want to take a tissue sample from in the middle of the stem here because we know no air has gotten to that. It's completely sterile. Uh, it's never been exposed to outside contamination. So that's what we're going to do. I've already cleaned my scalpel blade and flame sterilized it. So all we're going to do here, we're going to take this mushroom and we're going to open her up, right? Oh, just like that. Look at that beautiful thing. Now we're just going to take a small tissue sample from inside the stipe here all we need and again same thing with the agar plate you don't want to hover over it all right and we're going to very quickly open this up drop it in close it that's it super super simple we'll take one from the other side here open it up drop it in without hovering over it close it that's it that's how easy it is to take a tissue sample from a fruit. Now this Okay guys, now we are going to clean up this dirty culture. I don't know if you can really see this on here, but this, this, and this are all bacteria. This is a little bit of clean mycelium right next to some bacteria. So we're going to take a small transfer of this and put it on to a clean plate. So first things first, let's clean this bad boy really good again always spray your place down especially the contaminated ones clean it really 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 good before you open this thing up all right We're going to flame sterilize our blade again and again, you know, just wipe it down every once in a while. Just wipe everything down that you're working on it can never hurt. Okay. Now the actual contamination is all around here, right? The mycelium is this little round spot right here, right? So we're going to take a little chunk on the very far edge, this side and transfer it to a flesh fresh plate here okay so here goes it's going to be one transfer I'm just going to take just a little bit just on this little edge I only need a little bit I don't need much right just a tiny bit as far away from the contamination as possible we're going to put that down that's done and this is going to go right here in the middle and that's it okay now we'll check on that in about a week and we'll see if it was successful. We'll see if any bacteria came along with it or if we just got clean mycelium. Okay guys, so in conclusion, we're just gonna talk about a couple tips and tricks. Um, as you can see, it's not too terribly difficult. Uh, it's definitely worth learning. Um, once you learn agar, it's gonna completely change your whole mycology game. Um, so some, some of the things you really wanna remember is be quick and fluid with your motions. Don't be erratic. Um, limit the time that your plates are open and exposed to the air. And ABC, always be cleaning. If you follow those three rules right there, you'll be really successful with agar work. Um, and I think that's it. That does it for this video. Thanks for joining me. I know it was kind of a long one and I, I definitely appreciate your time. Um, and I really hope you learned something today. Again, if you like our content, like and subscribe. Please share. It really does help the channel, and I'd like to be able to do more of this. All right? Well, thanks, guys. And until next time, peace.